Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Weeks. I am the Chief Information Security Officer at FMBO. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about the, what we see as the number one attack out on the internet now and probably for the last year. Uh, it, it's the ransomware attack. A uh, quick definition of ransom, what the ransomware attack is, it's this is where the malicious actor or the hacker places code on your network or within your operating system and it actually encrypts all of your data. This renders your data useless to you. You can't access it. You can't use it. Then the hacker will actually follow up with a ransomware demand. Um, they will request a payment in order to send you the ransomware key that will unlock your data and let you start using it again. So I'm gonna walk you through some steps um, to help protect you from ransomware breaches and compromises. Um, these are really steps that, you know, I, I consider security 101 hygiene, cyber hygiene, basic security for doing business on the internet. There's two ways that ransomware actually enter your, your network and get and infect your operating systems and, and encrypt your data. One is through phishing attacks. A phishing attack is kind of a disguised or a well-crafted email that tries to trick the users or the employees into clicking on an infected email or internet link or an infected attachment within the email. So what you wanna do um, is try to educate your, your employees, your customers, your users, your family, on what a phishing attack actually is. Um, show them examples of the phishing attack. You can get examples out on the internet. Um, you could do a newsletter. Just show them what, what, to, be, what to look out for and what not to do. Um, probably the best advice for a phishing attack is if you don't know what the email is or who the sender is, then the best thing to do is just delete it. Remove that from your system um, we've never seen the same phishing attack twice. So if it's a legitimate email, the user will send you a follow-up email when you, when you do not respond to that. So number one for the phishing is if you don't know who it is or what it is, just delete it to be safe. The second way that ransomware enters your network is, is through vulnerabilities on your internet facing system. So your web servers, your terminal servers, your exchange server, email servers, anything between your network and the internet. And these are vulnerabilities that are released, fixes are released from Microsoft for these vulnerabilities. So it's a security patch from Microsoft. So I would recommend that you install all security patches on, on your Microsoft operating systems. These patches are free. Uh, they won't cost you anything. They are fully tested by Microsoft, even though I do recommend you test them on a few of your servers as well before you do a mass deploy. But the hackers will look for those vulnerabilities and unpatched servers, and they will take over that server and then place the ransomware on your network through that open vulnerability. So there we, we kind of have, you know, the main two ways that ransomware enter your network. Um, the good thing is we've, if there is a good thing out of this is we've only seen ransomware target Microsoft Windows. So they do not have ransomware attacks for mainframe operating systems or payment authorization operating systems, Unix, Linux. Not to say they won't in the future, given how these guys operate, but um, as of right now, we have only seen ransomware attacks on the internet for Microsoft operating systems and Microsoft Windows. So one of the other things we see is to help the hackers send phishing attacks, they will try to compromise Office 365 Outlook. So that is O365, that is companies that are using Microsoft for their email in the cloud. They are, they are taking over users' accounts and then they will send an email from the user to the rest of the employees in the company to try and trick them to click on a link or, or click on an attachment. So it's really, you know, if, if a user says, yeah, yeah, 
I, I know this guy, he's my CFO in the company. So he's got to, it's got to be a legit email. I'm going to go ahead and click that and open it up. And now you're infected. So the best thing to do with Microsoft Office 365 or O365 is to ensure you enable multi-factor on that. Quick little definition of multi-factor is it's just a second layer of authentication for you to log into your transaction sites or, or, or company sites. Multi-factor is, is something you know, which is your user ID and your password. The second layer for that is something you have, and you may have already seen this in action across the internet. This is a code, a, a four or six digit code that will come to you on an iPhone or an Android or an iPad or, or through an email, they'll text it to you that you could get a, a voice phone call with the code. This is the four or six digit code needed after the user ID and password. This is actually, you, you put that in and then it grants you full access into, into the site you're logging into. The nice thing here, even if a hacker has your user ID and password, they do not have the device that you're sending that code to. So they don't have your iPhone, they don't have your iPad, they don't have your computer. So they're just stuck at that point. So if it's also a good warning sign for you. If, if you start getting six digit codes from your financial institution or your company or some other bank and you did not put in a user ID and password or attempt to log in, that's a good warning sign to you that somebody has your user ID and password and is getting to that second layer of authentication. So you should log on to that site immediately and change your user ID and password. That's one of the good things is these hackers, they're really getting lazy with the ransomware attacks. So they're looking for what I call the low hanging fruit, very easy to breach systems, systems that don't have security patches, systems that don't really have a security posture, they will look for the easiest target. So the harder you make it for them, the better the chances they're going to move on to somebody else. I would highly recommend anywhere on the internet that offers you multi-factor when you're logging onto their website, enable it. it it's worth the, the, the little bit of extra time to get that code with the huge amount of security you get behind that. You're pretty much removing the, the hackers from logging into your account and reducing the, the, the chance of fraud with multi-factor. One thing I do want to make you aware of is Office 365, uh, O365, multi-factor is disabled out of the box. So when you start to use Microsoft Office 365, you need to actually enable multi-factor. So talk to your Microsoft rep, talk to your IT people, push them, tell them, you know, that we need multi-factor for Office 365. I would not do business with Office 365 without multi-factor in place. A couple other things um, to help prevent you from ransomware is a web filtering system. So this is a, this is a platform that sits between your internal network and the internet. And this system actually just monitors and detects all traffic in and out of your network to and from the internet. What this will do is it adds a second layer of defense to try and stop the malicious code from coming into your network. So if a user does fall victim to a phishing attack and clicks on, on, on the internet URL or the link in, in the email or clicks on the attachment, it's gonna go out to the internet and try and download that malicious code onto your network. This web filtering system will actually detect and block that malicious code from coming into your network. So I highly recommend at least a web filtering solution in place for your company. So you at least get visibility in that added layer of, of monitoring and blocking. One other piece that I've noticed over the last couple of years is um, have a good ransomware playbook. Have an incident response playbook that will tell you exactly the steps you need to follow in the event you fall victim to a ransomware attack. I would even take it a step further and have a, a 
a cyber defense, a breach or a compromise playbook along with that. You know, really we're seeing hundreds of cyber attacks and, and compromises on a daily basis now. Um, for every one you see in the media, there's probably another 99 that you don't hear about. So we as a society have pretty much, we're, we're, we've become numb to the cyber attack. It's just part of the doing business on the internet today. And, you know, it, in the past, you used to be judged as a company on whether you had a cyber attack or not. That's not happening anymore. Um, pretty much everybody's falling victim to these cyber attacks, whether it's successful or not. But now you're going to be judged on how you react in the event of a breach or a compromise. So I would highly recommend the ransomware playbook and a cyber defense playbook to let you test with a tabletop, build it, tweak it, edit it to the best needs of your company. That gives you something to, to go by in the event. You, you don't want to be trying to figure out what to do in the middle of a breach or a compromise or a ransomware attack. Things can get really hectic. Things can get out of control. There's a lot of chaos. But if you have that ransomware playbook, it gives everybody steps to follow, helps keep everybody calm and, and focus on the attack itself. One of the other things I would recommend is you, you need a good backup platform for your data. So the easiest way to restore from a ransomware attack is, is recover from a ransomware attack is just to restore your data that has not been encrypted. Now, if you're one of the lucky ones that the ransomware did not encrypt your backup, then you would actually have that option available to you. But I can tell you right now, most of the ransomware attacks, they, they can spread across your network in a matter of seconds. They move very quickly. And the hackers are also looking for your backup database. They know if they can encrypt that as well as the data on your internal network, you have they have a better chance of getting you to pay the ransom to get that unlocked code. Again, I, you know, I really, education and awareness is, is key to, to mitigating ransomware. The more you can educate, the more you can make your, your employees, your customers, your, your family members aware of the bad signs for a cyber attack or a ransomware attack, the better off you can be. Limit your information when you share it. That's, you know, if, if people only need name and address, then don't send the whole customer database with social security number or don't give them access to it. Just give them access to what they need. And again, the, the one takeaway I want you guys to get out of this is educate your users, make them aware of, of the bad attacks that are out there and patch your systems. That would, 90%, that would help the attackers move down the road. They're not going to waste their time, like I said earlier, and spend a lot of time and effort on, on somebody that practices proper cyber hygiene. So with that, I'm going to go now into um, what you can do in the event of a compromise. And there I talked a little bit about restoring your data. Um, if, if you are one of the lucky ones that the encryption does not spread to your data backups, then you, you can probably work with your network team or your IT team. They will build a, a new network that's separated from the infected network so the, the IT people can start building new servers and restoring data to get you back operational as soon as possible. The one thing you don't wanna do is you wanna make sure that your internal network is clean of the ransomware malicious malware before you start putting brand new systems on. You don't want to build 15, 20 servers, restore the data, plug them back into the network, and immediately they're reinfected. So you'll need to work with your information security, your cyber people, your IT people. If you don't have them and you are, you have fallen victim to a ransomware attack, I highly recommend you enlist the services of a third party cyber company, they can come in and help you with, with your cyber attack or your ransomware attack, help you clean it up, help you come up with a plan to, to start rebuilding and restoring from that. I would also consider filing a police report. 
Now, I know a lot of the companies out there are not mandated by regulatory requirements to notify in the event of a breach or a compromise or a ransomware, but I would highly recommend filing a police report. The benefit you get from this is now you've enlisted the help of the authorities. So the state patrol, the FBI, Homeland Security, depending on the ransomware and, and the level of attack that hit your organization, they will be there to help you through this. Um, the good thing is, if there's a good thing out of this is the FBI and Homeland Security work a lot with companies that, that fall victim to ransomware. So there is a good chance that they already have the specific key to unlock your data. And that all depends on the variant or, or the type of ransomware attack that, that was launched against your organization. The one thing you want to maintain a chronological document of, of the events that have taken place. So to the best of your ability, document everything from when the attack started, when it was actually detected, when you attempted to mitigate, when you took network or PCs off the network. You really want to keep a, a detailed list of events. This will come in for an after action report to help you build a better playbook, um, help you modify your, your cyber defenses, but it will really be a key factor if you plan, if you have cyber insurance and you plan to file a cyber claim, they will require what we call a forensic report that, that lists everything that was done in a chronological order. The big thing I would say, if you've fallen victim to a ransomware attack or a cyber attack, immediately cease all activity from the infected machine and remove it from the network. You want to stop that machine from spreading across your organization, spreading the malware across your organization. So the quicker you can get it off your network, the better. So there are my tips on, on how to help mitigate and what to do in case you fall victim to a ransomware attack. I hope you all got some good nuggets from, from my presentation and I thank you all for your time and remember to be safe while on the internet. Thank you.